Hey, hi, everybody. It's back to the Epic Podcast. Thanks again for joining us today. And I've uh, brought in somebody very special to me, a very close friend and a long, long time friend. Uh, he's, he's here to talk about a bit more about property. His name is Amos. And uh, don't forget to catch out his, uh, catch his uh, YouTube videos on Coffee with Amos. So do subscribe to his channel for the latest in uh, property viewings and so on. Welcome to the show, Amos. Hey, Edric. Thanks for having us. Hey, tell us you? a bit more about your channel, man. Um, okay, so, so uh, Coffee with Amos kind of uh, started, uh, well, I think, I think uh, we kind of s stumbled upon it, um, actually. Um, so so uh, early in 2019, we started uh, doing quite a bit of uh, videos, uh, home tours and, and, and all that. Um, so we did about, about, I think, three videos that, that that was uh, quite well received, and then, and then, um, and then we had a, a good friend that, that came by and said, "Hey, you know, Amos, you know, your videos um, kind of you, you do catch the audience. Like people enjoy watching what you see, but you know, right now it's just it's just oh, you know, it's it's this guy's face. It's just Amos's face, and he's just selling property. Why don't you come up with 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 a branding for yourself?" Um, so, you know, like, like, you know, just, just think of, of stuff that you want to do and, and then just name it. Uh, so we happen to be having coffee and, and he's like, Hey, you like to drink coffee, right? You know, why not? Why not? Maybe coffee with Amos. So I, I, uh, thought about it for a while and then, and then eventually we, we, we kind of ran with it. So that's how, that's how the, the channel came about. Interesting. Hey, uh, by the way, I yeah. um, wanted to just check with you as well. I mean, we've known each other for quite a while now, but I've always wanted to know. Now, um, how long have you been in the business, right? And essentially, what's that journey like, you know, from the, from the moment that you think, yeah, maybe property is a good thing to go into. How, how do you even get started? You know, how did you get started? Uh, okay. Um, so this is my eighth year in, in the industry. Um, well, well, how do you get started? I think, I think with any, any sales job, uh, sales work, um, the, 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 uh, payoff is, is definitely one, one that, that's important. Um, and, and many people join the real estate or, or um, sales business for, for that. Um, but what, what I, what I like about it is that it gives you this, this, um, you kind of manage your own time. You choose who you want to work with, with or who you don't want to work with. I think that's very important when, when uh, you know, coming out of uh, uh, let me see how long seven years, seven eight years of uh, military life. So I was a I was a army regular for a while. Um, so. I think I think in the corporate world is the same as well. You know, sometimes you you get thrown. Um, uh, things to do that you don't really want to do um, or people that you don't really enjoy working with. Um, so, so in being in real estate allows me to, to choose who I want to work with and basically work with people who, who appreciate the, the, the value add that you provide. Um, so to answer your question, how, how do you get started? Um, of course, you do the usual exams. You kind of talk to some friends and, and like, hey, you know, I, I, like, I like what this friend is doing. Or oh, I know this person. He seems to be doing very well. Maybe I have a chat with him. But I think I think once you once you really enter the industry, uh, it it's not as as glamorous or or, or as as um as easy. You know, like like we we on Facebook, you see you see only the good stuff, right? You don't see the the, the hard work that goes behind it. Um. So really, to get started, you you start from ground zero. You kind of you know, you do the typical, you go door knocking, you, you cold call leads, you, you send out, uh, you know, collateral, um, just to, just to get a few uh, of the space. And I think um, uh, when I first started, I even, I even camped at new condos where they, they just achieved TOP, right? And, and owners were collecting keys. Um, so really, literally, you stand the whole day there, you, you approach anybody that you, you can, and you just, just talk to them, you know, uh, and, and, and you hope to to kind of get a breakthrough in that sense. So so the initial months and maybe the first year, uh, it's really you know like like hard work, blood, sweat. Yeah. 
So, so that's how that's how I got started. What drew you to the industry? That's what um, you know. That that's what really intrigues me. You know, some people mm. get into cars because they like it. You know, so they invest in them and they they even yeah. open up their own workshops, for example. But what about yourself? Why property? I mean, essentially, some people who just see it as brick and mortar that I can stay in, right? And certain level yeah, of prestige. Yeah. But why? You know. Um. From a. Uh... So, so the current place that I'm apart staying from in, the money, is, apart from the money. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is um the home that I'm staying in now, or rather the property that I own. Um, right now, this is the thirteenth place that I've moved to. So, um, sorry, so sorry. Say that. Hold on. What? One, one, three, thirteen. Thirteenth. Yes. You yes. flipped. You flipped houses twelve no, times. No, 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 no. I I've moved house since I was born. Ah, times. okay, so, okay. So, so I guess uh, I was uh, my my parents kind of got started on on flipping of houses and all that, so I I've, I've witnessed how how um, you know when when the economy is good you make the right decisions or you happen to pick a, a good property and then and then something changes, uh, then you you kind of stand to benefit from it. Um, so so real estate for me has been uh, since I was a child there's something pretty interesting, so. I think my parents had, um, they've, they've probably, they probably bought six places and, and in between, you know, when, when we're in between homes and we kind of rent. So I've moved a lot. I, I've stayed in, in, I stayed in Yishun down to Novena to Pasiris and everywhere in between, um, just short of the West side. So, um, Singapore property is, is, uh, um, like in different areas, like if we, we talk about the Novena portion, uh, because this is really like, like, like your, your prime area, your, your town, mm-hmm. um, the demographics are different. Uh, you meet different people. When you stay in the heartlands, you, you, you meet a, a different sort of, sort of uh, people. And, and I think, um, uh, and also the, the, the cost of the property also would, would kind of, uh, uh, reflect the surroundings and and really meet all sorts of life uh, all sorts of walks of life uh, um, uh, in property but um why i chose to 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 uh, do property was really um i think it was something close to my heart that 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 i wanted to be able to see more houses um i like to see like like you know um like your home makeovers right when when you go in for super original first owner or 30 years kind of thing. And then, and then your client goes in and then he, they, they magically transform the, the home. Um, I think that that's one of the, that's one of the perks that, that I, I really enjoy. And then you see the, the large bungalows and the GCBs. And then you, you just never imagine that, you know, there's actually so much space in Singapore. Um, you can have this super long driveway. You, you walk in from the main gate, right? Mm. You don't see the house until you, you walk like maybe five minutes of driveway. Right. Um, so, so, I mean, on, if, if I were doing any other, uh, other work, uh, I probably wouldn't be able to see homes like that. Uh, that right. I, I probably never even thought that uh, existed previously. It's true. You could have yeah. gone into gardening, la. but you oh, know, yeah. They... <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> but you know, I think this is a, 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 you know, a little bit more of a better, uh, better paying trade. La. At the same time, um, uh, give, I mean, if, since we're talking property, right. Um, mm-hmm. And you're talking about uh, all these high, I would say, higher value places. Now, yeah. assuming, like, let's say, for example, for myself, I'm a one-time PTO owner at this point in time. Yeah. All right. So um, what are, let's say, for example, the, uh, the key fundamentals that we should know before flipping our first house? Um, the key fundamentals, I think, I think the, 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 main, the main point uh, that... that Anybody who's thinking of flipping property is, why did you buy the current place in the first place? Or mm-hmm. rather, or maybe maybe something more accurate is, is the, the next property or the first property they are going to buy, uh, what is the, the single most, most uh, important factor for that? Are you looking to, to, to you know, make your first pot of gold, you know, after, after it's, it's like, like first BTO, right? So maybe when you MOP, uh, I think, in Singapore, if if you if anybody has ever bought a BTO and you know you hold it for five years, the, the usual nothing nothing, uh, no surprises, right? You would definitely make a uh, 
a good portion of, of uh, appreciation on, on a BTO or even a, a new launch condo. Um, so, so the single most important thing is, is why you are buying that property. Um, is it for, for really, you know, you, you, you talk to any agent, the first things they will ask you is, is this for investment of our own state, right? But, but I think the, what goes behind that is, is um, do you want to call this place home for the next 10 years or, or maybe just five years? Or even, you know, I, I'm the kind that I just want to buy a place. I want to stay here for 20 years. I don't want to move out so many times, right? Um, so, so the purpose of buying is important. Then you can plan the exit of why you enter in the first place. Um, so in Singapore, I think, I think we've, we've, we've got the luxury of, of multiple choices. You can choose to do the, the appreciation game. You can buy something really old, you know, and, and then hope to get on lock. Um, there are many, many people who, who, um, choose to move or to buy properties because they want to register their kids for primary school. Um, so, so in that sense, I think it's a bit competitive um, for, for, for uh, families with, with children entering uh, primary school, right? So, so that, that's pretty, um, uh, pretty sought after uh, kind of uh, purchase play uh, where, where after that, after the kid finishes school, you, you know, you kind of uh, sell off the place. So, so really why, why you're buying it and, and, and how and when you're going to exit the property, that's, that's I, I, in my opinion, the most important um, uh, decision to make. Right. Thanks for that. So yeah. um, let's just say, for example, uh, I've also recently seen a lot more ECs popping up you know, over the last couple yeah. of years. I think you've seen this yeah. trend as well. Um, yeah. The thing is that, is it worth investing in an EC or is it, better to actually take something that's a little bit older, for example, like say 30 years or something like that? Mm, okay. Um, I think if, uh, so again, in, in perspective, if you are a first timer, mm. so, so assuming we had this conversation before you, you had your BTO, right? Right. Um, it would almost always make sense to buy a, a EC. Um, just because you get the first timers run. So it's already a, a kind of like a discount on, on purchasing a, a private property, right? Whereas if you compare it to, to a BTO, um, you may or may not get the grant depending on your income level, but uh, otherwise it's just, it's just, you know, this is a subsidized price. Do you want to buy it? So, so for EC, it's the same thing. It's subsidized price because the land has been subsidized and they still give you a, a first timers grant. So um, in that sense, if you're a first timer and you're kind of deciding between, do I go BTO, do I go EC or do I go private? Um, you know, if you don't want to stretch the, the finances too much to go into a private property, then, then EC would be a good choice. Um, but that's it. Uh, you need to kind of, we need to kind of study what's available mm -hmm. in the market and what are the other surrounding ECs um, are they, uh, were they, were they launched at a different uh, land price? Um, so, so it's, it's um, I, I wouldn't say it's so straightforward to just say, you know, go for EC, but, mm. but really um, you need to really understand what's, what's the surrounding uh, transactions and what's the surrounding launch prices and land sale prices uh, specifically for EC um, before you kind of enter, enter into an EC. Right. Yeah. Um, um, so this is from a first time. Mm. Sorry, sorry. Was, no, no, sorry, sorry. You were saying for the first mm, timer's point okay. of view. Mm. Yeah. So this is a first timer's point of view. Um, for home upgraders, assuming now like like uh, you you uh, you own a BTO, and um, you've achieved your you you've met your minimum occupation period, and you say mm, maybe it's time I, um, you know maybe I move to to an EC. You know, with the facilities, my kids get to enjoy it. Um, ECs also would then make a make a. Uh, I would say a comfortable uh, step up in that sense because you get to buy it under a deferred payment scheme where you just book the unit, you, you do the completion, you kind of do the down payment, but you don't start servicing the loan until you take keys. Um, so, so how this uh, helps homeowners is that, or rather home upgraders is that all you need to do is have that, that, that sum to do the down payment and then you continue staying where you are at in your, your, your present BTO. Um, until you take keys or until your, your, uh, your EC kind of uh, achieves uh, the TOP, right? 
then you do your renovations, you move in concurrently, you sell your place. So you don't have to be uh, kind of homeless for, for, you know, that, that construction period of, of uh, right. uh, your next, your next home. So, so in that sense, I think this really helps um, reach, reach the gap between, between uh, uh, HDB owners and, and those who want to upgrade to private properties. Right. Okay. Uh, but yeah. I also have noticed as well. I, I'm not sure whether this mm -hmm. is true. I would love to hear your advice on this. Um, now, when you take a BTO and you flip it, right, mm -hmm. as per compared yeah. to uh, taking an EC and then flipping it, for example, yeah. would, would it be fair to say that the margins are pretty much the same? Um, no, I would say that, that uh, for, we're talking about margins itself, um, definitely your, your, uh, BTO, you're going to get better margins on your BTO. Um, just for the, the, the simple fact that um, when, um, when we're talking about, about entry price points, um, definitely, uh, I think, I think um, even your $1 million uh, HDBs, right, they are affordable to the masses in Singapore. Whereas if we were to compare, I think, I think any EC now would probably be easily $1 million and above, just, just for... Um, conversation sake, right? Um, so looking at absolute price points, um, you would just have more demand for, for under properties under one mil. And then, and then, you know, as you go, the, as you, as you move up the tier in terms of pricing, you just have less demand because, you know, of, of affordability. Right. So, so your margins, uh, so it kind of reflects back into, into the margins you can get from, from BTO versus EC or, or um, EC versus private. Um, so, so they, they are uh, different animals, um, but um, I think in Singapore, most of the time going into, into a new launch, so like, you know, BTO, it's kind of like a, like a new launch um, uh, sale, right? Where you kind of buy it off plans, like, like going, buying an EC and, and buying a, uh, uh, private property. Um, this new launch uh, place, um, majority of them you would stand to to gain. Um, I, I'm speaking very broadly right now. Of mm. course, if you go in the market at the wrong time, you buy the wrong property. Um, so it's always good to to speak to to somebody you trust uh, in, in the industry, and and um, they can give you advice that that you know. Uh, that is to your benefit and not just, just oh no, I just want to get the sale done. So right. that, that's really important, yeah. Call Amos. <laughs> Do you need something? Just call Amos. He'll be more than happy yeah. to share this with you. All right, awesome. so today's lesson is pretty much yeah. free. Yeah. If, uh, if, uh, if, uh, <laughs> if more than anything else, you know, I'm always happy for free stuff. So, yeah. The, yeah. okay, now uh, moving on, right? I would also like to just ask um, on your end, mm -hmm. what's the most expensive property that you've actually sold so far? Um, let me see. Um, Which project was it? I think it would have been a landed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so about, about 8 mil. About 8 mil? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, pardon me for asking, mm. but how much does that go to you? Um, okay, so when it comes to to uh, I just want to know the big draw of a property agent, man. Yeah, like real I, think, estate. I think for 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 landed landed transactions. Um, uh, so we work on a we work on a commission basis. So everything mm. you kind of you kind of pre negotiate with the client uh, before they say you know okay uh, I'm going to to give you the exclusive to market the property. Uh, I think for landed properties, uh, the typical commission should be about one percent. Um, of course, some, some agents do negotiate for two. Uh, I've heard of some that do three, but, mm. but that's really uncommon. But, but I think if you, if you ask around, 1% is, is, is pretty common Yeah, for landed properties. Right. 1% of top line? Yeah, uh? yeah of the, the sale price. Uh? Ah, whoa. But still, yeah, that, that's yeah. still good money. Uh. I mean, it's enough to tide you over for. That, that's why uh, some of them were saying, oh, go into property, you know, get your license and, you know, hopefully you flip something. But, you know, they yeah, always yeah. say this without thinking about, oh, the, the, like what you said, blood, sweat and tears, you know, that you need to go yeah, into, yeah, right? Yeah. You have to get your license you, and you have to maintain, right? 
Yes, you, ha yes. you have to keep going for courses and upgrading yourself and, yeah, and practice that's almost. Right. That's so right. what is that process like? And uh, you know, how, how does that essentially take, you know, fill up your day? Um, okay, so, so, getting, so getting started is, is pretty straightforward. You, you sign up for, for a, a course provider you can choose to do a crash course over, I think, I think the current format is a crash course over three weeks to a month, or you do a, a kind of like a part-time basis where you spread it over six months. Um, so, so after this, this, this course, then you can apply for, uh, apply to, to sit for the exams. Uh, so during this, this time, you kind of have to juggle your, your um, whether you're, you're uh, working, or maybe you're still fresh, fresh grad, you know, just, just studying, um, just, just graduated. Uh, you say, you know, I, I don't want to do the, the, the corporate life, life after, after six months internship. You know, I just want to, I want to be my, do my own thing. Um, so you kind of, kind of to, to find work that, that pays you enough while you, you kind of pursue this, this courses and exams. Um, once you get the exams, you, you find a, you find an agency to, to join. Then, um, you know, uh, every year we have to sit, I think, um, as the hours, like, uh, they just revised it. So I'm not too familiar. I think, I think the hours are about maybe every year is about 12 hours, something like that, um, to go for the courses. And then you have to meet a, a minimum transaction amount. Um, this is, this is fixed by your agency. So it differs from agency to agency. Um, so, so. But to really get the business going, I think it's really your day to day. Um, so I, I know of I know of my friends who who say who are single and they, they like to travel. Unfortunately, this year they can't travel, but but they work for six months, and then they take a break for six months. So so literally they, they work very hard for six months and then they just travel the world for six months and then they come back again. So, um, so that's one of the perks of, of I think, I think being in, in real estate. Uh, I've also had good friends who are uh, full-time moms, full-time parents, and, mm -hmm. and the bulk of their week is, is focused around, you know, faring, you know, my first child to tuition, second child to taekwondo lessons, third child to piano lessons. Um, but, but. Uh, these, 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 these friends are really amazing. So they, they squeeze that, that one, two hours uh, that they have in a day when, when the, the children are all at classes. And they squeeze all their viewings and appointments into that one, two hours. Um, so the same thing for, for the weekends. And they still do very well. Um, that, that I think if you compare to most people, they probably take home, what they, take home more than what they would have in the, the corporate sector. Mm. Yeah, so really um, allows this this uh, freedom of time. Uh, but okay, so a typical um, a typical uh, agent, you know, like uh, a salesperson. That if you just start, then you probably be doing. You know, you wake up, you reply to, you spend about an hour or two replying texts that that come in, uh, inquiries, uh, setting up appointments. Um, spend another hour or two, you know, just going through um, what's available in the market. Um, in the particular area that your client is looking for, um, then you start your appointments. So uh, before before I think um, before COVID nineteen, um, I typically have maybe uh, two to three coffee sessions a day. So so I, I you know like just meet up with a friend or client, and then we we just talk property, what they want to achieve with the property, um, what's the exit strategy. What's a good area based on, on uh, what they like, uh, what they need, um, and then and then um, you kind of in the evenings. Uh, so so in Singapore, in the evenings is when you kind of have have uh, the bulk of your viewings. Um, if you were doing the expat rental market, then the bulk of your afternoons is spent, uh, you know, home home hunting with with the uh, expats. Um, and then, so this is your typical day and then weekends, uh, you know, usually just packed with viewings and, and just back to back viewings, um, probably no coffee sessions on, on weekends. Um, but for myself, I, I think, I think quite, quite, uh, quite blessed in the sense that I can, I, mm, let me see, this is 2020, right? I think in, 
117, um, we, we made a decision to not work on Sundays. So Sunday is really, you know, uh, just spend resting, uh, you know, with family and, and, and going to church and all that. Um, so, so, um, when I share this with some of my colleagues, they're like, what, you don't work on Sundays. Um, but I think, I think it's really, uh, you, you get to, you get to choose what you want to do. Right. Um, so, so this is, this is your, your typical day of, of doing uh, real estate work. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, um, something we will definitely like to find out is that yes, you get to choose your own timing. At the same time, mm -hmm. you also have to plan uh, around getting your own clients and all this. That brings me to uh, a, another question. Number one, right, is um, is pro real estate sales really about salesmanship in that sense? You know, or I mean, a, a lot of the time, some some sometimes we've come across some people who will hard sell a lot. Oh, it's this location. You've got this. You know, they basically just yeah. list out all the benefits, right? But as a yeah. salesperson myself, I'm like, okay, I know. Look, look we we know this is your shtick. We all know that, right? But what yeah. more is there that you would be able to, let's say, for example, what makes a great agent different from a regular one? Mm, okay. Um, oh, this is tough because um, in, in my agency, everyone is great. Like, mm. like they, they, are, they are all giants in, in, in what, whatever segments or, or, or um, um, area that they're doing. Um, but, but dude, but, you're, um, you're, you're swimming with a big... You're playing with the big boys, you see. That's different. Yeah, but let's say, for yeah, example, those who are just starting out. Yeah. So, well, that's dangerous yeah. line in that sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's the thing. I'm sure that it's because you've seen them, you've picked up these skills. Yeah. And in retrospect, what is it that you're doing differently today as compared to back then? Um, so, so um, I, I wouldn't be able to, to kind of... Uh, uh, share more on that because I've, I've joined this agency since the first day mm. so basically i've been swimming swimming with the giant since since um since day one um but but okay um i i feel that that the 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 consumers now they mm. uh, because information is so readily available right like like if today like, like edric you want to you want to check on ec you would probably do all your research like hey you know what's this when did this place launch, you know, what land prices, you know, who's the developer, what's the ceiling height, you know, how many car park lots are there? You probably have all this information already researched because everything is so available online. Mm. Um, where, where it's no longer uh, uh, you go to, to your salesperson to get the information. Um, whereas it's, it becomes a case where when you, when you speak to a salesperson, um, you kind of want to get that, that extra value add, you know, like, like you come to me and say, hey, Amos, I'm thinking of this condo uh, versus this EC, um, or maybe why don't I buy a, a you know, a 1.1 million, 51 years lease balance in Tiong Bahru, right? Um, so this is, this is where the, the salesperson's uh, uh, experience and value add and, and, and insight really comes in. Um, so, so I guess this is, this is really where the difference is because um, the, the majority of the, the property buyers or the consumers right now are really, really the millennials, uh, people, people around our age um, and not the baby boomers anymore, right? right. So, so it's a different mindset, it's a different uh, approach, a different engagement where it's more uh, consultative right now, um, hence, hence the, the, the multiple coffee sessions. Um, versus, uh, you know, I tell you, hey, Andre, you got to buy this place. It's in District Nine. It's they launched that that at uh, twenty five percent below the the next uh, neighboring development, uh, where it's really you know just pushing pushing you to you know focus on this. Um, I I I think the market really is mo is moving away from this direction to to uh, hey, you know, Andre, there's this one that just came out. It's twenty five percent below the other place, why is this good for you? Because of what you have shared with me in terms of, you know, I, I, want, to, I want to enroll mm -hmm. in a good school. I want to be able to exit this with, um, I, uh, of course, we can't, we can't guarantee that we will make a profit, but, but you know, at least I, I know that, that based on the stats, the data that you've shown me, um, I would be able to safely say that barring any surprises, I can make a profit on this property when I exit in 10 years time. 
Right. Um, so it's really this value add uh, that, that really comes in or sometimes we, we, uh, when we, for example, I have clients that do the search and then I tell them, oh, did you know that there is this, this MRT that's coming up or this place is going to be converted into a, a, you know, a national park. So you're going to have unblocked review permanently, and et cetera. And then, oh, I, I know I didn't know that. I, I only, I did the research on the condo. I know the, the, the plans, oh, it's how far to the MRT and, and you know, stuff like that. I know the transaction prices, oh, but I didn't know that these plans that are coming in, you know, this area is going through a transformation. So typically in, in areas like this, this is where you get um, the, the, what I like to call your, your, your um, second tier of appreciation or third tier of appreciation other than your usual, you know, new launch and then, and then he appreciates. So, so there is, there is kind of a, a additional exit points as well. When, when certain plans come into fruition, that has been put in place by, by the master plan. Mm, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. So, um, and I, I'm also looking at the sales tips if you ever had yeah. one. Yeah, let's mm-hmm. say, for example, if there's someone who's, especially during this time, COVID-19, right? It's tough. Yeah. Um, what is your take on the property market at this point in time? If let's say somebody, I mean, we're looking at job creation right now, right? Everybody, yeah. so there are a lot of people who need jobs. And what's the property market right now? And it, is it advisable for some to actually jump into this shark tank that you're in? Um, okay, in terms of, uh, I think, I think in any industry, uh, um, so prior to this, I was a financial consultant. Um, and, and, you know, I think whichever industry, um, or even if you're going into business, F and D or, 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 um, you know, anything, when you talk to friends and family, the most common response you get, oh, the market is saturated already. You know, there is this big boy, that's that big player. How are you going to beat them? I think, I think uh, even in Singapore's market, um, the market is big enough for everyone. Um, it's, not a, it, it's not a case of if you don't close this, you're going to starve. Uh, but, but really, I think it's, it's really working together to, to um, kind of raise the bar in the, the industry standard. Um, you know? uh, really, really if, you compare, if you compare the market today versus even as recent as 10 years ago, I think a lot of the, the cowboy Wild West practices where, where you know, you know uh, Chinese say a lot of lying on, right? Um, so so uh, I think, I think those, those, those practices, those days are kind of um, phasing out. They, they, they don't happen anymore. Um, so uh, if, if anybody will want to, to um, join the industry, I think as long as they're prepared to uh, work smart and work hard um i think the industry is big enough for everyone you know to to really just come and come and uh, uh find your niche in, in the market yeah right and what tips would you give them if let's say for example i just joined in COVID 19 hit i haven't even closed my first property what tips would you give them pray no, no. Um, <laughs> well that, that um, one's a given uh, to whoever you want to pray to <laughs> Um, what tips? I think really, um, uh, if you were a new person um, and you have no sales experience, really, really the, the the mentor that you choose to join really plays a very big part. Um, I think in the industry there are many, many different types of uh, mentors and and uh, or managers, right? Um, so some would tell you, okay, this is the formula. You do this, 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 A, B, C. You generate. You talk to a hundred people a day, you, you know, 10 of them, 10 oh, the, of them kind the of funnel. decide. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that is one, right. Um, then you have, you have, um, the mentors that say, Hey, you know, I know you, uh, you just joined, um, uh, it, it's difficult here. Take two, three of my listings, um, go and market them. You know, uh, if you're close, you, you, you keep the comms or, or stuff like that, just to kind of get you going to make sure that, Hey, you know, um, your first three months. I think. I think the most crucial part is your first three months. If you don't close anything in your first month. It's still okay because hey, you know, I'm new, right? Second month, oh, you know, maybe I didn't do something right. But when you come to to the third month of, of being new, then that's really when um, uh, you start to question yourself. Like, am I really cut out for this industry? Yeah. Um. So so really really getting that that first deal across the line, that the first paycheck that comes in. Uh, I think that really helps. Um, 
and and I think another thing is is uh, cannot be shy. Lah. So so especially especially in um, uh, like like I would call this personal sales, right? You 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 have to put it out there that hey, you know, like like you can tell your family or friends that hey, I'm doing this. But but of course, some people do it a bit too too over the top. Like mm. hey, you know, I'm doing this. You got anything you want, you must find me. You know, I think I think that that's a bit too much. But really. Just, just put it out there so your friends, your family know and if they want to check in with you or you know, they say, uh, you know, I just want to, to, to support uh, Amos because, because you know, he's been such a good friend, then, then that kind of gets you started somewhere as well and, and that's how you um, kind of build up your experience and, and your learning curve is very steep and who better to, to uh, uh, kind of, kind of uh, give you some additional leeway, additional runway uh, to make mistakes and learn um, than, than your family and friends. Yeah. True. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Um, so, okay, I, I'm really hoping that this period, right, uh, you know, people will tide over and all that. But for yourself, when you were actually going through all of this, what was your longest drought period? Uh? Longest drought period? Um, let me see. Because it's very, I remember when I... uh, it's very, very discouraging, you know, in sales. I remember... Um, uh, some some people have gone three six months right. Then they're like, wow, I really want to give up. And then su- suddenly something happens. You know, there's yeah, always that one yeah. magical moment that gives you that extra lifeline. I can still do it. I can still do it. That belief mm. kicks in. What was it like for um, you? I can't I can't think of a particularly long period, but but I remember when I first started, uh, and and I was pushing really really hard to close my first deal. Um, and and uh, let me see what happened. Oh yes, yes. So so um, there was one particular uh, uh, deal that I was working on. This was a new launch that I was working on. Um, the client came in, you know, selected a unit, booked the unit. But just before before exercising the the sales and completion, before signing, um, they had cold feet and they backed out. So, so for a new agent, uh, this was a, this was a very big ticket because this was, I think the com came up, there was a, there was some incentive on that day, just that weekend, if you close a unit, right, you get additional few thousand dollars. So, so that first paycheck would have been about $25,000. So, 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 you know, when, when that, when that deal burst, um, so this was, this was, um, remember I was uh, sharing with you earlier that, that, uh, when, when 2013 uh, TDSR came in, uh, out of every 10 buyers that I was serving, seven, seven to eight said, hey, you know, Amos, I can't buy anything now. So this was, this was that, that exact period. So, um, so the deal didn't go through. Uh, and, then, and then I think uh, I, I kind of, I kind of uh, said that, you know, I, I, would, I, would, not, I would not eat any uh, meat or anything or something like that um, until I closed my, my first uh, first deal so uh that period was about two months um before i closed my next first uh, my my next first deal um but the thing is prior to this uh, this 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 deal not 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 going through uh i was in the industry for i think uh six months i kind of started really in um, january one three and then you know you learn the ropes and, and then you start you start uh doings and, and, and all that um so so really i think my initial months was were the longest um but otherwise in between um, i think two months uh you know um, where you don't close a deal is it's okay it's common um where but if you don't close anything after the third month, then you kind of get a bit uh, panicky, right? Like, hey, you know, where's the next deal coming on, coming from? Um, so, so the longest would be my my initial probably my initial six months. Wow! So first six months didn't close anything, like almost. Yeah, yeah. that's when you were starting out because you were learning the ropes, huh? It seems. Yeah. Uh, I I think that might be just common practice, though. Quite a number of people mm-hmm. actually don't see that, and then some I've met a few others who were very good at the first one. And then after that, right, yeah. they kind of started to get that um, inflated, if you wanted to call it that, right? Um, yeah. Because 
it, it was almost passed over to them because it was such a good yeah. lead. It was given to them rather than them working. Mm. So um, during this period, right, I mean, how uh, I, I, I think uh, you've probably been like grinding and grinding and grinding to make sure that you get it right. That belief never lost, uh, never left you. Mm. But that mm. would that be fair to say. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think um, I I, uh, I believe that that you know like um, you know that that something good's gonna happen for you. You know, I think especially in sales, you you kind of kind of that 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 uh, like, you know, well, if I don't close this, then oh, you know, then then I suck, or or, mm. or you know, I'm just not cut out for this. I think if if there are thoughts like that, then. Um, Probably, probably not, not in the right uh, industry. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sales might not be for you if that's the yeah. case, right? That's basically yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember uh, way back then in 2000 and when was this? 2009, I think when I, mm-hmm. when I left the service, when I left uh, service as well and then uh, started mm-hmm. working like, in the corporate side, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't, I just couldn't get deals. I was doing telesales at the time. I just ah. couldn't get deals. And then all of a sudden, um, I, I asked somebody who was there for a year or so, and then I uh, asked him, so what is the most important thing to a salesperson? And then mm-hmm. after he told me one thing, like, you must believe. I'm like, believe in what? He said, believe in your product. Believe that you're going to sell. Believe that somebody's going to buy it. That this person yeah. will buy it. You know, so um, I, I just also wanted to ask, you know, a lot of us don't really uh, make put in such a cerebral approach to such things, mm. but deep yeah. down emotionally, right? Do you get emotionally connected or invested in your sales in that sense? You know, when you talk to somebody and you go, it's not so much that you must buy it, but I can really see you living in there. It's that, that kind of imagery that you have. Do you have that process? Yes, I do. Um, so I think for, for, uh, for the bulk of my clients, um, um, I I would say I'm I'm kind of invested on a personal level. Um, so so in this sense, um, I think I think it helps that I can or rather people kind of like my face and they like like chatting with me. Um, and and I think uh, I I've heard this a few times like oh you know Amos we met you the first time but uh, we we weren't sure whether we want to work with you but but uh, we thought of, we, we you know we talked about it and and we were comfortable you know just just working with you. Um, I think that 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 uh, rapport and and people can can sense that uh, when they chat with you, whether you're just out to to you know just just close that deal and, and make mm. the money, or already you know you 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 kind of um, want to 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 get them the, the best deal, or or you have their interests interests at heart. I think um, this is this is something that that. Uh, Maybe not everybody is, is, you know, in this case where, where some people say, I just want to keep it transactional. I close the deal, I get you the best deal and, and that's it. Um, so, um, so, so yeah, yeah so this is, this is, this is what, what we do. Um, and, and um, I think, I think with, with, with this approach, um, people are more comfortable to, to refer uh, new businesses and, and, and basically refer their friends and family and, and uh, this kind of keeps us going. Right. So I, I think that's a good lesson mm-hmm. uh, that not just, you know, uh, on the sales side of things whereby we look at it transactionally at the same time, we're also looking at account management, relationship management, because that's yeah, where yeah, the, the yeah. next few sales will also come from through referrals. Yeah. Or in fact, if, when they decide to flip it again, they can always come back to you because they remember that's you. Right. Great. Okay, and uh, a little bit more. I just want to pick your brain on something. Let's speculate a little bit. You know, oh, yeah. your cats are calling. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got two, right? Yeah. You got two. One, one's sleeping here in front of me. Oh, beautiful. Ah, yeah. Oh well. Anyway, uh, yes. Uh, I want to pick your brain. Speculation. Uh, mm. What's the property market, or what do you think the property outlook? is going to be like in Singapore uh, in the next five to 10 years. My biggest fear has always been that the next generation is going to be paying million dollars for BTO. Mm -hmm. That's always my fear. But in the next five to 10 years, what do you think we're going to be expecting? Um, I think if we, 
if we look back um, in recent history, right? Um, I think the most the most recent uh, crisis, global crisis, would be your your oh eight Lehman Brothers, mm. right? Um, so what happened is that um, the markets took a dive for about a year ish, and then in twenty ten, um, prices started climbing and climbing and then in in i think 2011 you had your first of cooling measures your seller stamp duties kept coming up different variations of seller stamp duties then you had your pilot buyer stamp duty um and until until you until 2013 where we had uh tdsi introduced the total debt servicing ratio mm -hmm. this really cooled the market down so um in that sense um your your okay so so two zero one three cooled the market down market went sideways for about two years uh, there about and then in about one six um, uh, land plot started to to pick up in prices uh, on blocks started happening um, all the way to I think two zero one eight where the government came in to to you know slap another round of cooling measures to kind of cool this this whole on block craze um, so there you have it is ten years um, so with this. Um, with this uh, COVID-19 situation, we also draw parallels to the 2000s where uh, SARS was, uh, it was a SARS outbreak, uh, you know. Um, but that was, that was still not that bad because it was contained to, uh, to kind of Asia itself. Uh, but we draw parallels to that. Um, the market recovered to, I think, uh, I think was it oh four or oh five, and then it kind of just went on a little bull run up to uh, Lehman Brothers happened. Um, so in that sense, we we if we look back at these two events, um, we see Singapore's uh, recovery to to um, really be strong. I would I'm I'm not sure about ten years, but definitely I think around the, the five year mark, we should be in the midst of another peak in terms of prices before any correction comes. Um, so so uh, another thing that, that, that was pretty interesting was um, in the 08 Lehman Brothers crisis, right? So the US uh, started uh, quantitative easing. Um, so that led a lot of uh, high net worth to kind of uh, individuals to kind of uh, reduce their, their US dollar holdings. So they would put their monies into Europe or, or, or you know, China, India, Singapore, to kind of uh, hedge, really kind of hedge their, their, their uh, portfolio, right? Um, so with the COVID-19, what has happened is that the US has uh, launched another round of quantitative easing. And I think, um, I think the, the, the kind of the, the pet name is being given is uh, it's, um, unlimited quantitative, un unlimited uh, QE that they will continue doing this until the market uh, settles. Um, the EU has also done Q, a form of QE. Even the smaller markets like uh, Australia and New Zealand, they are also doing some form of QE. Um, so really, if you were a high net worth individual, you know, holding, uh, with your holdings in, in US dollars, that's in cash, where can you put your money that is not going to get, um, you know, you're not, you're not going to lose up uh, because QE keeps happening, right? So really, you're left with China, uh, India, and Southeast Asia, right? In China, you have your, you know, with the whole COVID thing, I, I don't think the monies will go into China right now. So you're left with uh, India and Southeast Asia. Uh, but if you go into a, a region that's, that's um, uh, a bit higher risk, you probably want to come into Singapore, right? So um, in the past, Hong Kong would also be an option. But um, Hong Kong with, with um, the, the, I think the turmoil in the past year, uh, people are trying to move out of Hong Kong. So, so I think um, just a month or two back, you, you, I think our newspapers reported that um, a lot of MNCs are moving into um, India to take up um, office spaces and, and all that. So they're kind of doing some form of restructuring. So, so really, this kind of reinforces where the, the money is going, you know, uh, with, with the major economies doing some form of QE, really you're left with India, Singapore, and, and you know, some people may be going to 
China, there's really not much, uh, not many other economies where you can kind of uh, move your funds into, into a, a high growth or safer kind of region. So Singapore in the next five to 10 years, I think we are well primed to take advantage of this. Um, if you look at um, uh, Singapore's, uh, rather MAS, when they, um, when they kind of introduce uh, cooling measures, right? Um, our, our property prices are actually supposed to be uh, a lot higher than it is, uh, but because of all the self-imposed cooling measures, it's kind of like, we do an artificial recession to kind of bring down or kind of reset the prices just to cool it off a little bit. Um, um, of course, another, another view is to, you know, when, when these cooling measures come in is to prevent a bubble from happening, um, so which will lead to, to you know, a crash in prices. So without this crash in prices, um, we do a, we, we kind of have a, this, this uh, uh, cooling measures to come in to kind of, keep prices in check. So you would see that prices uh, would go sideways a little and then it will climb up again. So we wouldn't see the, the usual, you know, you know, you get the, you get your peak and then it drops and then it goes back up to a new peak. Um, so, so in a sense, Singapore's market is, is, is safe. It's regulated um, where, where it's still kept affordable and prices can still increase. Um, so you wouldn't, you, we wouldn't face that kind of, uh, 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 um, we call it fire sale, right? Um, I think uh, when we when we were in, uh, I keep mentioning TDSI in two zero one three because that was really a um, uh, if you if you for lack of a better word that that caused the recession in the Singapore property market, right? Um, there were many fire sales that 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 uh, came about then. Um, so so TDSI really came out as a form to uh, kind of stop the over leveraging. Um, brought down the the maximum loan uh, um, uh, percentages. Um, I think the recent, uh, even the recent two zero one eight, that that cooling measure also brought down the maximum loan from eighty percent to seventy five. Before TDSR, I think it was at ninety percent, brought down to eighty percent. So all this really helps. Um, I think the local um, investors or local property buyers to not over leverage of course you know you have people saying oh you know what wow, they have to down pay so much now but but really this this kind of keep your prices in check if there is a global downturn or, or when property prices drop that that uh, initial 25 percent down pay will kind of cover your your bank's margins versus a, a, a 90 percent loan right and your down payment is 10 percent that 10 percent might not be enough to to cover it, and then you, you get uh, margin calls from the banks, which lead to you know bankruptcy and, and all that. So with this, I think with this this um, current uh, measures in place, um, the Singapore property uh, market and property prices is in a very uh, very safe uh, space to be a property owner. Um, so so then then the next steps is do. I invest in property or do I just buy a place to stay? You know, if I buy a place to stay, then how do I protect my, my monies that have gone into the property? Um, and and uh, I think the last point you brought up is, you know, our children will probably be looking at million dollar uh, BTOs. Um, actually, if you ask me if they, if they launch something at uh, the Greater Southern Waterfront, you know, your, your, your that, that Keppel, um, uh, the Tanjung Baga Keppel area, um, I think it will probably be quite close to that, um, considering that uh, Pinnacle went, I think they, at the BTO, they were at, was it, I think 400,000 or, or something like that. Um, so that was, that was during the SARS period when the market was really depressed. I think if we, if we look at a similar, uh, something similar to Pinnacle that's launched as a BTO, you're probably looking at maybe 900, really possibly even a mill for for um for a five room flat wow okay yeah back then, really the kind of, back then pinnacle was selling at about 800 plus right uh bto no bto about 400 plus oh, 400 plus yeah now now it's valued at about one mil already right? 900 yeah about uh, 900 correct yeah correct. so if you look at uh if you look at i think um that we take the, we take the recent uh bto i think uh that closed two days ago on the 18th 
um, a five room flat in Ang Mo Kio uh, would be around 700 over 1000 already. So, so you just bring down, uh, really, really you bring down the, the get close, you get closer to town, your land prices go up. Yeah. Um, so if we look at Dakota, Dakota had a, had a BTO exercise as well for the foreign flats. The foreign flats were at uh, 600 over 1000, I think, low 600s. Okay. So, so yeah, so, you know, if you ask me, will we see million dollar BTOs? Yeah, if it launches at the greater southern waterfront, you know, in, in really prime land, then, then it's a very real possibility that, that this, would, this would happen. Mm, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the inputs. Yeah, okay. At least now I know I, I have to put some money aside for that kid now. Ah. <laughs> nice he will thank you stuff. for it. <laughs> nah, nah. Let him, let him fan for himself. <laughs> <laughs> I paid my dues. He better pay his. Yeah. Okay. So um, <laughs> for more information, please contact Amos. All right. Go to his YouTube page. Check the about. Go email him. Coffee with Amos at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, for more information. I'm sure that you have a lot more questions, but... Uh, moving on, we're going to have to close this off. Now, I've got a questionnaire, which I, I always uh, start with, or at least, I'm sorry, I always end uh, the uh, segment with. All right, so it's just a rapid fire thing uh, of a couple of questions. Now, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, Let's go. so one word that you love the most? Joy. Joy. One word that you dislike the most? Counter, counter proposal, counter. Counter proposal. <laughs> such, such a salesperson. <laughs> I want to negotiate. Can cheaper or not? <laughs> okay. I still didn't can cheaper. <laughs> uh, if you could have a conversation with one person, fictional, non fictional, past or present, dead or alive, okay, who would that be? Wow, this is this is tough. Um I, I would actually like to uh, have a chat with, with my pastor, uh, my head pastor in church, uh, Joseph Prince. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Interesting Joseph conversation. Prince. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Favorite dish and place to eat? <sighs> Hainan Kari Bung. Where? Uh, where? Um, this one is at, uh, this is at Haogang Meadows. They just moved there. I recently mm -hmm. found them after they went missing for two years. So, so it's my, um, it's it's the taste that I kind of grew up having. My dad would always uh, you know tap our back, you know. Nice. And then we have it for breakfast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Shout out to Alkang Meadows, if you're listening, which I doubt. <laughs> All right. If you could not be in the property market, what else would you have been doing? Wow. Um. Wow, this is tough. Uh. So I was previously with with uh, with uh, Mindef, right? Um, I think if if uh, certain situations were a bit different, and I um, I took up the the officer contract instead, I would probably enjoy still still serving in the military. Hard to say. We will talk about this <laughs> offline. <laughs> Hard to say. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, okay. Uh, what does retirement look like to you? Retirement looks like waking up, opening a door, walking out to the beach, and then spend half a day fishing, you know, come back, walk the dogs. Um, I think, I, I would like to think that, that I live a, a pretty simple life. So, so, um, uh, retirement could be even be you know buying a, 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 a like a property in, in Bali or something right and then just just living like the locals I think I would I would really enjoy that um, but I think I think I would still want a safety net back in in Singapore yeah yeah so retirement really really you know it's it's just enjoying the peace and quiet and, and, and just going for a long walk along the beach stuff like that I think um, that's really nice nice and how do you yeah. want to be remembered? What's your legacy? Wow. Um, Existential crisis. That's why I wrote these questions. Uh. <laughs> how do I want to be remembered? Um, 
I've actually never thought about that. Uh, but but I think I think um, I would like I would, I would like to know that 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 if you know people remember me is uh, that you know when when they asked Amos for help he never said no. All right. So uh, the guy with a helping hand. All right. I'll give you a hand right now. Thank you so much for joining us on uh, the, you know, uh, Edric Pony Company. So for those of you who are listening, again, uh, do visit the YouTube page, uh, Coffee with Amos. If you'd like more property tips, just email him and I'm sure that he's more than happy to share them with you. So thanks again for joining us. So if you like this video, like it, click subscribe and do all that stuff on YouTube. Okay. And with that, we are out. Thank you very much. Thanks, Edric. Take okay, care. Bye. See ya.